What's up? Daniel here with Slow Haste. The Digitone is absurdly good. I'm going to talk about what brings the Digitone above and beyond to the next level in comparison to some of the other synths that it kind of competes against. I'm not going to discuss any other particular synths here, but I do want to show you my workflow with the Digitone and how I kind of use it to break the barrier of what a typical workflow might look like when composing and arranging a song. I hope to continue this video series with some of my other devices that are frequently featured on the channel, so keep an eye out for those. We're going to start with just a little pattern that I've developed, and then I'm going to show you how I will take that pattern and bring it to the next level to make it more absurdly good than I think it already is. So that's all we have so far. It's kind of just a bunch of presets and I'll show you really quickly how I made this. Let's start with the baseline first because it's simple. It's just this preset. And it's just a bunch of bass blocks. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the drone next because I'd say it's the next most simple part. And this is again, a preset. And I just have a swell. It's just one chord. And as you can see, long attack, long release. Again, really simple, but kind of effective as uh, a nice element to bring in toward the end to reinforce that mid-range. Next, let's talk about this arpeggio. We got a little more complexity going on right here. To be quite honest, I don't even remember which parameters are uh, locked to these trigs that have automation. Um, I believe I may have adjusted the delay values. Yes, it looks like I did exactly that. So what I did here, and you can listen while I explain this, but you can record automation by holding record and hitting play, and then it will record the values of any knob that you may turn. So. Basically what I did was I recorded the sequence and adjusted the delay knob. And then it locks those values to each of these individual steps at the discrete moment of time that has a particular value of delay. I hope that makes sense. But you can hear the delay kind of build. And actually it sounds like there's a little wrong note in there. But that's okay. Can't really hear it in the greater picture of things. And finally, let's talk about my favorite part, the drum pattern. So here's our drum sound. It's just a hi-hat. But using the sound locking on the Digitone, we can scroll through and, uh, and select sounds from our sound pool for this, for this track, which I'm not going to do now because I already have it set up. but you can see that these different trigs have different sounds. We got kicks, hi-hats, we have bells, we have other bells, we got more hi-hats, all the good stuff. And I went over how I do this in this other Digitone video, which you can find up here to kind of show how I build a sound pool and, uh, and select sounds and, and trig lock them. But I really like how this patch came out. So yeah, we have this nice, simple, floaty, but grounded by percussion, beat groove jam. And we're gonna bring it somewhere. We're not gonna bring it here. I created a second pattern after this first pattern just to kind of experiment with it. Um, and, and I don't love it. It's not bad objectively, but it just, it isn't where I wanted to go with it. It sounds like this. The 
the bass line isn't great. Uh, the percussion kind of dies down a little bit too much. I love the arpeggio and the drone, but I don't know, not in love with it. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to copy this pattern with function and record, go to a new pattern and then hit function and stop to paste the pattern. So now pattern three, it's going to be the same as pattern one. And then we're gonna save our project. So let's start with our little sparkly friend here. What I'm gonna do here is take some parameters and automate them. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna to listen to some different options, how we can keep things relatively similar and constant to just like build the pattern, like build intensity. We're not making a new pattern. We're just gonna develop this one a bit. So let's play around with some sounds. I'm gonna shut up for a bit and let me just watch my process. So look at that. By bringing in some of these other synth levels, some of these synth levels, we have additional density and texture. I changed the mix from Y to X just to give us some more of uh, the A and C ratios mixed in. And then I've put an LFO to change the algorithm, just free running at a pretty mild depth. So I don't know exactly which algorithms are being captured by that wave. But this is a wobbly bubbly sound compared to this sound. Let's restart it. This is where we're coming from, right? And it changes into this. And this is like classic alien digitone sound super metallic with all those piercing overtones up top but it's still kind of like warm in its own way and you know what let's make it a little bit warmer simply by cutting the width down just a little bit let's turn up that chorus and reverb too because why not Okay, so that's step one. We're just improving here, just kind of messing around to see how we can develop the sounds that we introduced in our first pattern a little bit further. All right, let's move on to the pad. Here's one of my favorite pages on the Digitone. Are these ratio offsets? And this is basically like a detune function. So let's get this verging on uncomfortably warbly. Yeah, that's nice. Really subtle and simple, but super effective. I love out of tune things. Oh yeah, more hollow. This sounds like wind blowing through a cavern of out of tune guitars playing an open chord I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, ignore me I kind of like the brightness of algorithm 5 here let's crank the drive a little bit and just save this So comparing to where we came from so far, let's hear what we have. 
This is much more muted and pad-like, just like a standard string sound. But this... A little more evolving, a little bit windier. A subtle change, I'll say. But a change nonetheless. There we go. Some more evolution. Let's pair it with our, our other synth sound. We're getting super alien here. Let's tackle the drums. What I think I want to do is put a little double kick. I want to increase the frequency of our kick drums. I'd experiment a little with this. There we go. I want to have more kick activity before our snares. At least during that, that first part of the pattern, I feel like that'll be cool. And then maybe open it up for page three and then really tighten it back down on page four. And I actually might change some of these to a different kick sound. Just for the sake of variance. Yeah, like see how this little, like this pickup kick to the snare is different than our main kick. Little things like that are really cool and kind of has the same effect uh, as something I do on the dig attack where I'll change like the hold or release time of uh, a kick that comes after a boomier kick to just be like shorter, have, have less release. Um, so let's see where else we can do that. I don't know, I like a lot of the snare sounds we have in here, so maybe. Yeah, we'll see what this sounds like. I think that sounds really cool. It's very, it's very straight, very to the tempo, but I think uh, kind of provides a nice contrast to the complete lack of rhythm we have in all of the other elements of this tune so far. All right, we're gonna do one more thing. I'm just gonna show you this on one step and then I'm gonna go through uh, and skip recording it on video because it'll be tedious, but I'm going to take the hi-hat hits and I'm going to add delay to them. And we're gonna change our delay here to we're gonna give ourselves a 30 second note delay. And I wanna leave the feedback here because we do have some delay on the other patches and if, unfortunately you can't modify the master delay page per track, it applies to all of the tracks. So I'm just gonna sacrifice what we did with the time on some of those other synth patches and we'll hear what that sounds like applied to everything else, but I think it will be a cool effect to get some, some ratcheted delay on, on these hi-hat hits. Let me go through and program those and I will see you on the other side. Okay, let's hear how this sounds. Compared to the first pattern. Cool, so you see how that added a lot of energy just by making those few little tweaks. I do wanna go back and listen to this track now that we've adjusted some of the master delay parameters to see and hope that it didn't totally ruin what we had going on.
No, it still sounds pretty cool to me. So lastly, we have our bass. Which, to be quite honest, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with it. Might turn up the feedback and maybe some drive. No, kind of makes it sound a little too buzzy and hollow. I like the low end you get without any of that drive. Let's keep it. Let's see how it sounds with everything else. So I had to go back in and do something interesting with the voice stealing. As you can hear, this sparkly patch here is getting cut off by something. So what I'm doing is going into the percussion track and I'm just locking it to two voices. And that's allowing this track to breathe a little bit. Might actually cut the release a little bit too. For more more of a natural decay of that sound. Or a, more of a natural release, should I say. Now that we've figured that out, let's go back and listen to the first patch into the second patch and hear how this evolves. It's interesting how that second pattern that I didn't like almost feels like it's more deserved or it's uh, we, we were rewarded by pulling everything back and kind of getting frantic with that baseline because we took the time to evolve all of the patches we created in pattern one in pattern three. Interesting how that happens. So all of these changes are really subtle, but the fact that you can do all of these crazy things with parameter locking and voice allocation and just adjusting all these little subtle parameters over time with the digitone very easily by copying a pattern over makes it so easy to evolve your songs. And this is just a simple idea, a simple loop that has turned into like an intro and a verse or like two parts of a verse of a full song just by building and tweaking those sounds. I really hope you found this useful. And if you did, please consider checking out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash slow haste. I have a bunch of different tiers there where you can get some sample packs, some free music, and even sign up for lessons with me if you're interested. I teach Digitone, Octatrack, Digitact, OP1, intro modular stuff, and general music and synth consultation. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at slowhaste. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me. I really like chatting with y'all there. And also in the comments here, leave a comment if you like any of these tricks or if you have any other tricks that you like to use on the Digitone, or maybe talk about some other synths that have features that the Digitone doesn't that you like to use. I feel like I always learned so much from you all in the comments, so it's good to have that forum for discussion. Anyways, thanks for joining as always. I hope you enjoy whatever you got going on today. Peace.